You are listening to the Fed and Fearless podcast. On today's episode, I'm chatting with Danny Sheriff about how a missing period can be an indicator that you're missing out on a bigger life. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Laura Schoenfeld, a registered dietitian, nutrition business coach, and online entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience in online business. And I'm here to show you everything I've learned about creating a life and a business that nourishes you. On this podcast, we'll talk about the lifestyle habits, practical strategies, mindset shifts, and leaps of faith required to build a healthy body, a powerful mind, a strong spirit, and a successful business. Hey there, welcome back to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Laura Schoenfeld, and we have a really great episode for you today. I know I always say that, but sometimes there are certain episodes that I record that I'm like, oh man, this is so good. And today's episode is definitely one of those. Now, on the Fed and Fearless podcast, you know that we're all about helping you learn how to fuel your body, your mind, and your spirit so you can reach the big, scary goals that you have for yourself in a fearless way. And today's conversation is no exception. In fact, this person who I'm interviewing today originally came on to talk about hypothalamic amenorrhea. And we've talked about that topic on the show before. As many of you know, if you've been following me for any length of time, it's something I have talked a lot about. It's not the only thing I talk about, obviously, and certainly have not necessarily talked about it a ton lately, but it is a topic that I'm relatively known for in the space as far as helping women with. And this guest today is someone who has dedicated her entire career to helping women with hypothalamic amenorrhea. And we were going to talk more about the basics about HA and kind of just make it a podcast about HA, but it ended up evolving into something so much more interesting than that. And I'm actually really glad it did because you know, it's one of these things where if you're not getting your period or you're having period problems, sometimes we can think, oh, that's just that one area of my life that's a problem and I may or may not want to deal with it. But in reality, period problems, including a missing period, as in the case of hypothalamic amenorrhea, is actually a sign that you're doing things in your life that are not serving you and potentially are even causing you to not be living the big, exciting, fulfilled life that you could be living. So maybe not your typical HA conversation, but I thought it was so interesting, even as someone who hasn't necessarily had HA, but has definitely had hormonal issues before that were caused by a misalignment of priorities and um, beliefs about myself and all of that. And so our conversation today definitely revolves around that idea. And I just really appreciated this particular guest's perspective on it um, and her willingness to just dive into some conversations that, like I said, neither of us plan to have. So I know you're going to love this, whether or not you're dealing with HA. Um, If you're a woman and you have goals in your life and the way that you eat and exercise is either helping or not helping those goals, then this will be something that's really interesting to you. So my guest today is Danny Sheriff. Danny is a period recovery coach for women with hypothalamic amenorrhea, a fertility awareness certified practitioner, and is studying to be a functional nutrition counselor. She's the host of the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea podcast and the creator of the HA Society, a community for women who want to get their period back and then optimize it. Her mission is to free up mental space for those stuck in the diet hard mindset so they can do their life's greatest work. Danny is Australian born, but lives in Austin, Texas with her husband, Jake, baby girl, Zara, and German shepherd, Jasmine. So like I said, this conversation definitely was not uh, what we prepared for or what we had uh, gone into the um, interview with the intention of talking about. But I think what we created because of our openness to just going where the conversation takes us is something that is a really unique take on HA and hormone issues in women. And I'm hoping that, like I said, whether or not you've ever dealt with hormone issues, that you can see the possibility that your life could be bigger and even more exciting and even more productive if you were able to focus on the things that really mattered 
And if you were able to take an honest look about how you're treating your body in pursuit of the things that mean something to you. So I know I'm being a little cryptic, but you'll just have to listen to the episode. And without further ado, here is Danny Sheriff. All right, everyone. Well, I am so excited to have with us on the show today, Danny Sheriff. Welcome to the Fed and Fearless podcast, Danny. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. When I told my team that I was going to be on your show as well, they were pumped. I remember listening to old podcast of yours. I forget what it was called, but it was like... Probably the ancestral of- RDs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Early, early days. So I know you've been around for a while um, doing the good work. So I'm very honored and excited to be here. I love it. Well, and as you probably know, and as maybe some of my listeners know, I used to do a lot of stuff in the world of hypothalamic amenorrhea. So it's really cool to get to bring you on to chat about it because I know that this is something that is such a huge focus for you and definitely an important topic for a lot of women. So I know that for our audience, probably a lot of them know what hypothalamic amenorrhea is, but I always don't want to make assumptions about what people know. So do you mind just sharing with the audience what is hypothalamic amenorrhea? Yeah, because you never know when someone's listening for the first time. It's so important. The first time you ever hear about it is a very important time. So HA, as we call it, hypothalamic amenorrhea, is when your cycle goes MIA, or goes missing, typically because of some kind of massive energy deficiency, whether you're over-exercising, under-eating, chronically stressed, and typically it's some combination of the three happening and your body, your hypothalamus is like, nope, right? There's a message, a signal from your brain. It's running all kinds of processes and functions at all times in your body. And although your period your cycle ovulation is so important for your overall health immediately right now in this moment, it's dispensable. So it goes missing because of our, honestly, for the most part, societal pressures (laughs) are typically what's, what's causing it at the moment to go missing. Yeah. Um, and I love that you mentioned that the period or the menstrual cycle and ovulation is something that is so important for health, but it's also not, it's not a survival function, right? It's, um, if your body feels its survival is threatened, it's something that can be put on the back burner for a while or for, as I've seen in some of my previous clients, a decade or, you know, 15 years, that kind of thing. So, um, so I think it's important for women to get that. It is so important for your general health. And it's also something that, you know, you can technically survive without it. And that's not to say that, oh, well, if you don't, if you have it, it doesn't matter. It's more just to say, um, you know, that's probably why it doesn't get the attention or the focus that it really deserves in the world of conventional health because it's not life-threatening. It's not something that's like, you know, oh, we'll just just put you through fertility treatment when you're ready to get pregnant. It's not that big of a deal, which I'm sure you've heard before. Oh, like every day. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's not, it's so important to remember too, it's not, oh, yes, we don't need it to survive, but we do need it to thrive. They are different things. They are totally different things and we forget that. And our doctor to- often, they, they do just say like, oh, well, you don't need this to survive. <laughs> you, know, you don't need it. And yeah, it, but, but we want to be healthy. We don't just want to get by. So that's honestly where my obsession with this comes from. I am actually not obsessed with your period or obsessed with you getting back. And I have to sell this to clients and um, members of my society all the time, which is like, it's cool. But your period for me is a vessel for you to get your entire life back. That's what it's about for me because it's so, in our culture, so connected to um, obsession with food and body image. And so I'm not, I don't go down the route of HA for everyone in the world. There are very likely people in third world countries and places where HA is a problem, 100%. Uh, but you know, I am really trying to serve the women that are right here in front of me in my community, in my environment, and they are not thriving. They're just not. And that's what it's about. So 
I want to back up because I'm sure there's people listening that don't know you, don't know your story, don't necessarily know why this is something you're so passionate about. And, um, and especially because I do business coaching for nutritionists, it's so this decision of what you're going to focus on, what you're going to, you know, share a message around is such a big part of our conversation. And something that I love about you and your business is how passionate you are and how like you have this bigger vision and mission that's pulling you forward in what you do. So can you share, I know I'm sure the story could probably be the full episode, but can you share just a snapshot into why this is something that you care so much about and how your story inspired this? Yeah. Yeah. So on entrepreneurial, I always wanted my own little business, my own like online business. Uh, but you know, I felt that there's no such thing as an unsaturated market anymore or like creating something new. So that's an important piece of it that just happened on the side. But basically I had no period. I was working in nutrition coaching, macro counting, helping people essentially lose weight as soon as fast as they possibly could. And just not, not, it was not what I value today, but that process, you know, I lost my period for like maybe eight years or something. And when I learned what was going on, I realized multiple things. Oh, I've been brainwashed because, because the first time I ever heard about this idea that I didn't need to be thin, I thought that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like that was my first thought. I was like, these people do not know what they're talking about. And, but I kept like listening to these people. It was Noelle Tarr of um, oh, Wolf and yes. Women. And, yeah, <laughs> these I people, like, I love Noelle. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen, keep listening, but I think you're crazy. And that, I just remember that really sparking it. But slowly for me, I learned what I needed to do. It was not overnight. I resisted. I pushed back. I avoided. I was in quasi or pseudo recovery, as we call it you know, trying to get my period back on the bare minimum of what I was willing to do. But slowly through that process, I opened my eyes wider and wider and realized like, oh, I am obsessed with dieting. What am I missing out on in my life? And I eventually just reintroduced all of these like play and joy and happiness and getting the libido back. And you know, I'm an illustrator, but I hadn't illustrated for ages because I had this story in my head that that's something that I did as a child, not something that I do now. And when I kind of just was able to like, look back at how far I've come, I was like, Oh, I was missing out on my life and other people were missing out on what I could provide for them. And so I was lying in bed at night one night and I was like, where can I get more information? You know, I listened to all the podcasts, including your own, Noelle's, et cetera. But everyone was talking about it from a very, from a, uh, you know, one episode here and there. And I realized there is no podcast dedicated to age A. Oh, there's a gap. There is a market that hasn't been touched like yet. And so just, I just did it. I just did it imperfectly made it happen, launched it in its rawest form just to get it out there and done and see. Cause I had this feeling that I wasn't alone. I wasn't the only one afraid to make the changes. I wasn't the only one unsure about what was happening and wanting to hear other women's stories and wanting to feel not alone. I just was like, there's, there's a whole bunch of women out here who want this. And so I just went and did it. And that's honestly the story. Yeah. It was the podcast first. Yeah. And um, I think there's something really valuable about the fact that you had gone through it yourself. That was something that, you know, even when I was working with the HA crowd, I had issues with irregular periods. Like my periods used to be like 40 days, 50 days, 60 days. So there was definitely tendencies in that direction, but I never lost my period 100%. And certainly not for, you know, eight years, right? And so the fact that you went through that, I think gives you a much different perspective on the issue and on the recovery process than someone who understands how to solve the problem, but didn't necessarily go through it themselves. And not to say, I will put a little caveat on that. It's not to say that you have to 
be your own avatar if you're creating a business. It helps because you can tap into that emotional state that you were in and the struggles that you had and all of that. Um, But I always use the example of, you know, male OBGYN didn't have to have given birth to be able to help somebody have a baby, right? So it's like, there's, it's just a different, it's a different value that you bring that can really help people because you know what it felt like to have that experience. And I'm really curious when you were first dealing with the HA, so you said you, you had it for eight years before you ran into people like Noel that kind of showed you a different way of thinking about things. What, like, did you, did you have beliefs about your period missing that you now realize we're just totally wrong. I'm assuming you would have because you probably would have done something about it if you had realized what it was causing in your life. Yeah. Well, it's funny you brought the male OBGYN because he was the person that brought it to to my attention. Um, Yeah. I just had an attitude, like a blase attitude. Like it just, I knew that it was gone because I was an athlete and I was restricting my food. I knew that that's why it was gone. But my belief was that it's because I'm an athlete. Like, that's cool. That's good. Uh, and it's not a big deal. And I know that to get it back, I'll just, if I, if I want to get pregnant, when I want to get pregnant, I'll just stop training. Not realizing that actually stopping training isn't a thing <laughs> when you're obsessed with it. So yeah, that was the belief. So it was almost like, this part of your identity that made sense to you where, oh, of course I don't have my period. It's because I'm an athlete. It was, it was like validating. Yeah. It was totally validating. But when my, I, I went to a regular gyno checkup and he, I told him I don't have a period, just FYI. And he's like, oh, well, we worry about that. And that was the first time I had ever heard that that was something to care about. And that he, he wanted me to take a uh, Provera like a progesterone pill challenge. People in the space typically know what that is. Most of us have been suggested that. And, you know, I was, I was just like, no, (laughs) I ain't taking no pills. I'm a like, you know, my, I can do this myself attitude stepped in at that point. And that's really what kickstarted it. So someone just needed to tell me. Mm -hmm. Well, and good for him for bringing it up. Cause I feel like sadly, Many doctors, I don't know if I want to say most or not, but many, many doctors are like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll just put you on birth control to get that pill bleed. And once you're ready to have a baby, we'll we'll see what's going on at that point. And it's, I think that creates that false sense of security to say, oh yeah, everything's fine. This isn't a big deal. This isn't something I should really be concerned about. And what I really like about what you were sharing before is that you're talking about how it's it goes way beyond just are you having a cycle, right? Like, cause I think sometimes if we get overly focused on that, it's kind of like, well, why does that actually matter? Especially for people who don't want kids or aren't ready to have kids. It's like, okay, well, why does it matter? And, you know, you, you and I both know some of the health ramifications of the drivers of HA, like, you know, bone loss and just different things that can happen. Like you said, low libido, if, if, you know, you're sexually active, that that's not a fun situation to be in. And, you know, all of the, all of the physical problems. I mean, I always thought bone loss was one of the biggest ones because I, I worked with so many women that were getting like stress fractures and diagnosed with osteoporosis and they're in their, their twenties and that kind of thing. And, you know, maybe it's like not something a lot of 20 year olds are thinking about, but just knowing that your peak bone mass develops by your like early thirties, like, God forbid you already have osteopenia, osteoporosis when you're 30. It's like, well, what do you think is going to happen when you're 60, 70? Like, and you're already on this trajectory of bone loss. So there are some things that we know actually cause other problems than just infertility. But what I really like that you were mentioning is that so much of your life was being affected by the behaviors that were also causing the HA. And I'm sure you probably have a similar perspective on this. A lot of times that period missing or irregular or like bad PMS, that kind of stuff, which, you know, like I said, I haven't had HA, but I've had irregular periods, bad periods, like painful periods, you know, all the stuff that comes along with hormone imbalances. Even if we separate the inconvenience or discomfort associated with those symptoms, what I love 
about what you're talking about is how you're using that more as an indicator light for like what else is going on in your life that isn't what it could be because of these beliefs and behaviors that you're engaging in. And similar issues cause the delayed periods, uh, constant anovulation, short luteal phases, bad PMS. They're all kind of like come from similar places. They just manifest differently for different people. And some people get HA and that's, you know, from a, if you have like business people listening, just niching, you know, but typically when I get someone's period back or someone who has it, it, it's not perfect overnight. So we still end up going down that route of fixing suboptimal periods, but it's really, I have this dream that one day someone's going to come to me and say, Hey, 10 years ago, I was having this issue and I was having trouble understanding why it mattered. I was having trouble getting motivated to do it, feeling like I had the community supporting me, et cetera, et cetera. But you really helped me. And now I solved this problem and I'm up for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> like that's my goal, right? Is there are problems out there. There are issues happening. There are opportunities waiting that women are not taking up because they're very focused on eating as little as possible and getting as many workouts in as they possibly can, biohacking and optimizing their health. And like these women are listening, right? Because it's, it's a rabbit hole we go down and they're not looking up from it and being like, where else can I add value into the world? I think that's just been the biggest thing. I did not get my peer back to get pregnant. I got it back when I realized that was a problem and I wanted to just continue down this path of being the most healthy person I possibly could be. Um, it really was by surprise that I realized that I was missing out on the fruits of life, the spice of life. So I just like want women listening to you. If you feel like regardless of HA or not, if you feel like you're a little too focused on your nutrition or your exercise or something. And it's like, it's taking you away from living a full life. That's something to check in on. And that can be affecting your period in some way. And you're not connecting the dots yet. I may have gone off track from like what you even asked, but that's, I love it. I mean, that's exactly why this podcast got created in the first place. And even though, you know, for me, my business has pivoted since the, the podcast was created, I feel like it's all kind of the same. Like even when we're talking about entrepreneurship for women, there's so many things that if you were just obsessed with your body and getting workouts in and dieting and like, you know, all of that stuff that, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't care about nutrition or you shouldn't work out. Like that's, you know, definitely not that level of extreme, but there's so much stuff that we can do in our lives that in my mind is way more meaningful to ourselves, to others, to, you know, our legacy, all of that, that your diet and exercise are like just not that important. And that's something I really had to go through in the last, gosh, I guess like 10-ish, maybe a little more than 10 years, just kind of getting to a place where it's like, I don't just eat trash now because I don't care about my body or something, but I do look at food and exercise as being, okay, how is this supporting how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis so that I can do the things that I feel yes. called to do. Health and wellness was never meant to be the goal of our life. It's meant to be something that allows us to pursue the goals of our life, whether that just be to live happily, have a wonderful family, get a Nobel Peace Prize, whatever. Uh, you know, it was never meant to become the thing that we obsess and think about all day. That's why I love have your handful of podcasts, right? That you listen to, to like stay up to date and stay motivated and keep, keep excited about it, but then put it down and go and do something else. Like I wouldn't have this business, the business that snowballed from having my podcast. I wouldn't have that if I was still standing in the kitchen with my fitness pal, trying to figure out what I can have for lunch. Like I just wouldn't have time or yeah. energy. Yeah. Well, and as I evolve in my business and the things that I'm focusing on and, and the areas of growth that I'm emphasizing at any given time, it's really interesting to see how one of my mentors always says, new levels, new devils. And it's like, 
I, I was talking to my husband about this the other day because we were talking about some of the challenges we see mostly other women in my life facing, but looking at like the things that they struggle with and not, not, not to judge them or anything like that, but just kind of saying, I want to have bigger problems, if that makes sense. It's like, I don't want my problem to be, you know, did I follow my, my fitness pal guidelines that day? Or did I get a workout in? Like, I don't want my problems to be, you know, oh, is my house clean enough? That kind of thing. And and I'm not speaking to anyone in particular. So some of the things that I think women a lot of times get distracted by because it's, you know, you know, the way that the patriarchy has evolved into some harmful, <laughs> harmful things. Um, anyway, I digress. But all I was going to say is like, that's something that always drives me personally. Because even with business stuff, I mean, I love having my own business, but it's not the meaning of my life to make money, right? And so a lot of what I do in pursuit of growth in my business comes back to how can I deal with more important problems for myself and for others? And so it's something that I feel like for me, just looking back 10 years ago, the kind of stuff I used to worry about and stress about and be like focused on is so different than now. And again, I try not to be like worried and stressed and like, you know, obsessively focused on things, but I I feel personally that I have a much bigger picture view of life and of what my goals are, of what I feel like my skills and gifts are that I have to share with the world. And none of that would be possible if I was still circling the drain around like, is this snack paleo or did I get my workout in today? So I love that we're having this conversation because I do think, even though we we tend to attract women or people in general, but I will say most of our audience is women, we attract people who want to do more with their life than just worry about their health. But I also think sometimes you can get trapped there because it's almost like you don't know how to, you don't know how to focus on something else without just letting the wheels fall off your physical health. And it's something that, again, for me personally, I had to get to a place where I could still take care of my body. And especially being pregnant, I've had to kind of like you know, shift my focus on what that actually looks like on a day-to-day basis. But the goal is always, I just want to feel good so that I can do the things that I have, you know, planned to do and the go- and pursue the goals that I've set and show up as my best self for the people I'm here to help. And I feel like that shift in perspective was something that had to happen so that I could actually move out of that self-focused, I just need to be the healthiest person possible because that's the most important thing. Uh, And the irony is that when you can get into that place mentally, you, you know, resolve many of the health issues that you're probably trying to resolve anyway, because so much of it is related to us being so highly strong and stressed out about, yeah, the very relatable things that you were mentioning, like just being the perfect wife, career woman, mother, daughter, sister, fashionista, just like checking all the boxes. When we let go of that, it's very liberating. And I'm so excited that you're going to be a mom because this process and learning all of this has been so wonderfully applicable to being the best mom that I can be. Because if I was still circling that drain, like you were saying, I would be putting a lot of that stuff onto her. And I don't think I would realize it, but as a result, you know, I know the type of language I want to use around her. I know I don't want her to see me body checking myself in the mirror, weighing and measuring my food. And I don't want to be putting just like my beliefs around food and eating on her. So that's been really big. And then even more so is it helps you develop this flexibility that you need to get through life and to be happy with it. And I, I experience daily the wonders of being flexible, right? Oh, I don't have time to sit down and make this elaborate meal that I probably would have gotten really anxious about in the past. I'm just going to eat this, this, and that. And all the information that I know about nutrition and health is serving me in making the best decision I can at the time with the tools and resources that I have or the food that I have in the fridge. Uh, and then I'm just going to go with it. it. It's not perfect, uh, but I know that, okay, there's a bit of meat there. There's like a, a carbohydrate here and that meat's kind of lean. I'm going to 
add this fat in as well. I have those tools and that knowledge and I'm just going to go with it and make what I can with what I have at the time because I got to get to the next thing that matters more if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because it reminds me of what you said before about being a macro coach and probably being so hyper-focused on like measurement and everything has to be the right balance. and Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's a lot of women and people in general, but we'll just say women right now that don't know anything about macros. And so when they're faced with limited time and energy, because they don't understand those core principles of nutrition, it's like they end up eating something that maybe doesn't help them feel good. Like I know for me personally, even just being pregnant, I've had to totally shift how I eat because the way that I used to eat doesn't work for pregnancy. I used to be very much like breakfast, five hours later, lunch, five hours later, dinner, that kind of thing. Like (laughs) no snacks, no, I mean, dessert occasionally, but it was like, you know, very rare that I would need to have dessert or something. And being pregnant, it's like, like even before we jumped on this podcast, I was like, I have to get a snack because I'm not going to be able to. And you have to. Yeah. And it's like, if I don't, I will die. Yeah. And it's, so it's one of these, (laughs) it's one of these things where it's like just having that foundational knowledge of nutrition and, and macro balance and all of that, blood sugar control, all of the things that actually do affect our health. And it's not important to understand. It's not like totally irrelevant to have that knowledge. Um, but it's like, I use that database of general understanding and then adapt it to my situation. Right. So it's like, yeah, I don't necessarily think snacking is quote unquote, the optimal eating pattern. And if even i you know, do heavy air quotes on that because who even knows what the optimal pattern is. That's not the pattern that I used to follow. It's not the pattern that used to serve me the best. I was very happy to eat a solid meal and then be ready for my next meal in, like I said, like five hours. But since that's not working for me the way that my body is currently functioning, I had to basically combine that that baseline knowledge of like, okay, I I know I need protein. Like I can't just skimp on that because I'm not, this isn't going to make me feel good if I don't eat protein. Um, But also being totally flexible about, especially during the first trimester where it was like, I just need food. I don't even know what I'm going to eat right now. It just needs to be calories. And even now in the second trimester, like I'm in this always hungry phase. I went from like no appetite during the first to now I'm like midway through the second. And it's like, I I remember a couple days ago, I woke up at 4 a.m. starving and I had had dinner. I'd had dessert. Like I had eaten a lot the day before. And I was like, I think I've eaten enough. And then I wake up at 4am like hungrier than I've ever been in my entire life. And it's like, those moments are where, you know, in the past I might've been like stressed or like, what did I do wrong? Or, you know, like I need to micromanage (laughs) things. This is a problem. Right. Versus, I mean, it's, I I don't love waking up in the middle of the night starving, (laughs) but, um, but my immediate reaction was like, I just need to go eat something. Like, I'm obviously not going to be able to fall back asleep if I'm this hungry. So I just like found some food and I was like, I need something with some protein and some fat and some carbs. All right, drinkable yogurt. Let's do it. Get back to bed kind of thing. So I feel like being able to balance that general nutrition knowledge and that adaptability to life and not making it so important. It's like, yeah, my body needs fuel. I don't want to feel starving where it disrupts my sleep and then I'm exhausted the next day. Like that's not good either, but I don't have to take it so seriously. And it's like, I can get it into this place where it requires minimal brain power so that again, it's just, Hey, my body needs fuel. What's like something that can help me, you know, get through the next few hours and then I'll have breakfast when I have breakfast. And it's just not, it's like a non-issue. And that's something that I think, you know, one of the reasons we still talk about health on this show, because I've thought about like, you know, since I'm not doing health consulting anymore, I've thought like, is this really something that's benefiting my business? I even think with a lot of entrepreneurs out there, business builders, that kind of thing, they're not using health to support their business. It's either they're totally ignoring it and they're going like, oh, I'll just have espresso and that's my my lunch or something. Or if they're type A, like, you know, I definitely have that tendency and a lot of my clients do. It's just very rampant in the nutrition space. It's like everything needs to be perfect. And then they end up putting so much time and energy and focus into that, that like they're really losing a lot of their brain power, creativity, 
energy to put towards the things that they want to do in their business. So I don't, I know this conversation is going all over the place. Danny and I it's had great. some questions prepared, but you know, scratch but those. It's so, but it's, it's rel- like, we are not just happening. We're not robots. You know, you can't, we can't be on this call and have this awesome conversation if we don't feel well. And if we're not excited about it and it's, you have to have, you know, I hate this word, I guess, but balance in all these different areas. And people talk about like uh, work-life balance, but really it's more like integration, you know, and how you are feeling and sleeping and eating matters for how you're performing and how you feel, but it shouldn't be a problem that you're trying to solve, right? You just, you wake up at 4 a.m., you're hungry, I'm pregnant, I got to eat. I know enough now. I know what I need and I'm just going to eat it. But this doesn't have to be anxiety inducing. This doesn't have to mean anything about me and my morality and my worth. It just is. And it's like food and health and wellness is a tool for my longevity and, you know, my performance in life and my attitude dude, right? Like it's so linked to your anxiety. Do you want to be an anxious business owner or do you want to be pumped on life and calm and able to be in a headspace to problem solve, you know, and how you live your life, your lifestyle is going to play a direct role. So it's all related. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've definitely noticed a big change in myself, even with running my business and, and the shift to business coaching. I always get these questions when I'm interviewed about like, are you, do you enjoy it more? Is it more fun? Like, and there's parts about it that are more fun, but there's definitely some stuff that I never had to deal with when I was doing nutrition that I do have to deal with now that kind of make it, it's an opportunity for more imposter syndrome, for more anxiety. Like just, there's a lot more, um, I hate to say like gossiping, but that's the word that comes to mind. It's like, you don't, when you're working with nutrition clients, you're probably not worried about them connecting with each other and like spreading rumors or like, you know, there being some kind of like circle of other professionals that might be talking about you or something. And so there is that level of, um, just for me, a lot of it comes back to, you know, being confident in myself and being secure in who I am and not worrying about what other people think of me. But it's like that, that was always something I was interested in when I was in the health space. And it was just put on steroids when I got into the business coaching space, because it is such a small world and people talk. It's something that, you know, I've seen other people kind of get canceled and stuff and, or attempted cancellation for some people. And it's like, there's just this level of additional, um, potential stress. And so for me, being able to physically handle stress and be stress resilient and not already be entering my day in this like frazzled, underfueled, underslept state, that's even more important now because there's different types of stressors that I have to deal with um, in this particular type of business, in the way that we're growing a team. Like there's just so many different things that I have to deal with. Being pregnant, soon to have a baby, like all this stuff, right? And so for me, I've really noticed this in myself over the last year, like just being able to get into a place where physically I can tolerate stressful situations more, I believe is imperative for me to be able to to run the business I'm running now because of the higher stakes in a lot of in a lot of cases. So it's been really interesting because um, I'm definitely the kind of person that's prone to anxiety. And especially if I'm not eating enough, having too much caffeine, not sleeping, too much exercise, not enough exercise, like all the different things that affect that. And so for me personally, a lot of my decisions around food, exercise, any sort of health habits in general, other than like wanting to have a healthy baby, often come down to what's going to create the most stable emotional state for me so that when I'm in these kind of higher pressure situations or dealing with stuff that's a little scary, I'm not having this like meltdown because I can't handle the higher stakes that I'm entering into in the current business that I have. So, you know, it's definitely been an interesting experience for me, but I think it can apply to other people as well, where if you want to play a bigger game in your life and you want to achieve bigger things and you want to step out more and, you know, share what you're passionate about, all of that, you have to be in a state where your body can physically handle the higher level of stress and that you're not going to just like 
crack in half because your body's like, I'm already stressed out because you're not eating enough and exercising too much and not sleeping, you know, add a little bit of social stress of, you know, getting yourself out there as a business owner and it's like everything can crumble. So for me, it's definitely been really, really important to use health as a support mechanism for those higher stress circumstances. Because there's been a few experiences in the last year for me that I'm just like, I like, like if I was feeling the way I felt 10 years ago, there's no way I would have been able to, you know, get through that. Yeah. This is great. This is the, this analogy of like stress points. You have so much, so many stress points allocated per day that you can handle. Where, where are you going to like let them lie? And how are you going to give yourself more stress points to work with if that's something that's of value to you? So in the HA space, right? Part, another part of why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I'm also a, a fertility awareness practitioner and functional nutrition counselor, but a lot of the advice for HA at the moment is like, oh, the research is just in, eat about 2,500 calories and do no exercise. And there's just this intuitive part of me that's like, hmm, <laughs> I don't know if that's long-term sustainable and if that's going to cause issues elsewhere, right? So I work with lots of women who have tried this approach of I just eat calories, like boom, doesn't matter where they're from, they're from lots of processed stuff and I'm doing no exercise. And I am freaking out because my period's not back yet. And I'm super anxious and I'm, I'm uncomfortable in my body, yada, yada. And it's like, well, you know, it's probably related to the approach that you're taking. You can't, maybe you'll get your period back on potato chips, but probably maybe you won't ovulate. Like, and maybe you'll be really anxious and un, like not feel good about yourself. What if we take an approach of getting your period back on whole foods, let's reestablish a relationship with the foods that have become, you know, demonized in your mind. Maybe that's not serving you. Maybe you can have a cupcake every day, but let's like, let's reinvent this relationship and this understanding you have with, with it. And now they're able to stick with the process of recovery for longer because they feel better in their body and in their mind. This is crucial. This is another big reason why I'm trying to be a voice in this space because there's a lot of people just kind of saying, eat cake and you'll get your period back. And it's just more nuanced than that. But it, it goes for life, right? Like that. So people who go through recovery in this way have gained tools for life. So whatever your health journey was, has given you these tools right, to help you now that you're playing a bigger game. Oh yeah, but you've been training for the big leagues for the last like 20 years. So you know how to play. It's just so important. And it's funny you say that because that was always such a big thing that we focused on in my Get Your Period Back program was this idea of like, you don't have to just eat a bunch of junk food and sit on the couch all day. I mean, you can, if somebody wants to do that, listen, I'm not going to like tell them don't like, if that's the best method for you, that's fine. But I think there's in, in the HA space, there's some bigger voices that they go really hardcore in that direction. And it's like, they're like, you shouldn't even be walking. And it's like, well, what if I have a dog that needs a walk? Like, am I like not allowed to do that? And what if walking is good for my mental health? Like, what if I just enjoy getting outside? And so, um, and I totally agree. Like if, if the solution you're using to fix the problem is not something that's sustainable, it's like you're creating a new problem that needs to be addressed later where it's like, okay, I don't know how to have my period without being you know, sedentary and eating a bunch of junk food that maybe doesn't make me feel so good. It's like, now what? Right. So I, that was always our philosophy too, was yes, you do probably need to eat more. You do probably need to work out less. Like in most cases, that's going to be part of the change, but it doesn't mean you have to go to this extreme, no exercise for three months and, or no exercise until you get your period back just eat whatever. And it doesn't matter if it's like got any sort of micronutrients in it or anything like that. Cause that's another piece of it too, is micronutrient um, deficiencies. And I would also work with a lot of people who 
you know, the energy imbalance was part of it, but it wasn't the whole thing. They also have thyroid issues, gut issues, that kind of stuff. And it's like, if you have a thyroid issue and you're just eating a bunch of junk food, that's not going to help your thyroid necessarily function better. So, or if you have a gut issue and you can't even like eat those foods because your digestion is totally wrecked, like that's not going to work for you. No one talks about that. You know, no one talks about that. But I have so many clients who are like, well, the issue for me is that I have like ulcerative colitis or I don't have a stomach or something. Um, You know, it was removed. And he's like, okay, well, I see the challenge here that is unique to you and the potential nutrient deficiencies that you might be having as a result of not being able to eat a whole bunch of the foods. It's, it, yeah. And the people who can just go and eat anything and everything and do no exercise, well, they're not coming to us. (laughs) They're not listening to our shows because they're not having these issues. So we're here to serve the people who, yeah, can't just go from working out seven days a week to nothing. Like there is a process that we need to go down in order to approach this and to make this sustainable. And it makes no, makes no sense to solve one polarizing way of living with another super duper polarizing extremist way of living. Like let's just meet in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know that we could probably talk about a lot of this stuff for a lot longer. Um, And I'm like looking at our list of questions and I'm like, we probably didn't really get to any of these, but the good news is I know that you have a podcast that you cover a lot of the specifics around how to actually get your period back if you're not getting it. So do you want to talk a little bit about um, how you help the people in your community with this particular issue? Yeah, guys. So I have... I, I started with a podcast, as I mentioned. I called it the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast because you want people to know what your show is about. Very clear. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to be as obvious as possible. Um, so I, I basically connect with women there and validate their experience. Like, have you thought this? Because I thought this too. And so did my guest here. And so I share a lot of stories, just to like bring community in because it, this is a very lonely road. Re- healing your relationship with your body and with food is a lonely road for many of us. So thank gosh for the internet for that. So I have that show. I have an attempt at spelling it. Google it. <laughs> you'll you'll get close. And there you'll learn more about like if you want to work with someone who's been there, I can help. Um, I have a team of women who have also been there who can help. And I do run a community called the HA Society where we do weekly group calls to go through what's working, what's not, what's encouraging, where can I get some encouragement and just to create this, like the conversation and facilitate a space for women to heal their relationship with this, share their wins, get help, get questions answered. And I specifically utilize cycle tracking, fertility awareness method as a tool for recovery, which I think a lot of people would be like, Oh, if you don't have a period, how do you do that? Um, But I do it and just help give women like the data and the science and the tools that they need to actually make it happen. So that's the HA Society. You can Google that. And the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast is just the best place to go. If you don't have a period, you know, it's for you. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny you mentioned the cycle tracking thing. Literally just last night I was talking with some friends about pregnancy and you know, knowing how far along you are, that kind of thing. And one of them was like, well, you know, it's so hard to know because like you think maybe that was the month you got pregnant, but maybe it wasn't. I was like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I know to like a three to five day window when I got pregnant. (laughs) Like maybe there's a little flexibility there, especially because obviously, you know, ovulation doesn't always happen on the exact same day. And it's, it's not like an exact science where you're like, that was the hour that I got pregnant or something. But I'm like, I'm pretty sure I know when I got pregnant. So there wouldn't be this like, it might've been last month. It might've been this month. And it was just really interesting to me because sometimes I feel like I take for granted the stuff that I'm aware of and how like most women don't know anything about this kind of thing. And, um, and again, I know not everybody's trying to get pregnant, but it is something where it's like the fact that there would be so many women that would have an experience where they didn't even know what month they got pregnant because they were so out of touch with their bodies. It's like, that was a little bit of like a reminder, not a wake up call, but a reminder to me like, oh my gosh, this is still such an issue, which, you know, extra side note, 
we in my nutrition business accelerator course, we have a lot of people who second guess their niche selection because they're like, I don't know, is this too saturated? And one of the really common ones is the fertility space. And they're like, oh, but there's so many people doing it. I'm like, I literally cannot wait until the day that the fertility and women's health space is oversaturated. Because yeah. there are so, so, so many women that literally don't know this stuff at all, have no resources, don't even know what to look for. And the fact that the fact that the vast majority of the people that I have in my life don't know any of this stuff, unless they're literally in this world. I think it's really easy to make assumptions because you're like, I know all these people that do it and these podcasts and all of that. And it's yeah, like, you're in the world. I know. Mm-hmm. And it's, cra- mm-hmm. it's just crazy to me, like how many people don't know anything about this stuff. And so again, I don't want to go off on a crazy tangent, but it's just one of these things where it's like, like I said, like you were saying your dream about people coming back to you and being like, I won a Nobel Prize because I wasn't like obsessed with my body anymore. One of my goals is to get people into a place where it's like this information is so widely available and understood and shared that we are actually truly at a place where nutrition support and health support isn't as in demand. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know if I'll ever see it in my lifetime, but it's something that I always remind my clients because it's like, like you said, it's really easy to assume, oh yeah, of course everybody knows this. Of course, like this is saturated at this point. And it's like, no, people really don't know this stuff. No, they really don't. And it allows me to create a life cycle for my clients, right? So yes, I help people get their period back, but oh my gosh, then I get to help them optimize it. Then I get to help them get pregnant. And so now I have these very other like niche within my niche where I help women who have recovered from HA get pregnant. Because although they... It's the same for them as it is for anyone who's cycling. There's this trust factor that they, like, I know what they've been through to get here. They're going to choose me to help them with that next step. I mean, niching is the bomb. (laughs) I always love that too. I mentioned that to my clients. It's like, just because somebody comes to you with a particular problem doesn't mean once that problem is solved, it's just like, all right, bye, right? Like a lot of times people have other stuff that they want to deal with. And because you help them so much with that thing, it's like, well, maybe you can help me with this. Like I have people coming back to me all the time that were like, you helped me do X, Y, Z, and now I'm having this. Can you help me with that? It's like, you've created that trust factor that you can help them. And so even if you have skills in other areas, it's okay to get really focused on what your main conversation is and what your main topic of um, you know content creation is. Because people are very dynamic. There's a lot of stuff that you can teach them beyond just that one problem. And especially with HA, it's like, I just love how it really opens women up to a world of possibility. And then there's other things you can support them with that go beyond just getting their period back. Cause like you've said, just to kind of like circle back to the beginning, getting your period back is not the big goal, right? Like it's part of the goal and it's a good sign that things are moving in the right direction, but it's like that in and of itself is not the thing that's going to change your life. It's all of the other stuff that that process opens up for you. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going <laughs> to like let, I'm just going to let that be the final, the final piece. <laughs> awesome. Well, I wanted to give you the final word, but if, if uh... but that was perfect. It was, yeah, it was perfect. Well, I know that there's going to be a lot of women listening who want to hear more. Like I said, we didn't talk a ton about the nitty gritty details of HA. Like we could have, which, you know, it's totally fine. I think sometimes that stuff can maybe if people don't understand the why, it's hard for them to connect with why it matters for them to even learn about the what. And there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff happening in the world these days. It's like, you can't learn about everything. So my hope is that our conversation today, if it resonated with you and you realize like, oh, I'm that person that isn't getting my period and never really thought it was an issue, but now I'm really curious to find out like, how is this really affecting my life? We just, you know, their goal was to open the door to that conversation. And I know Danny's got a ton of content on all of the nitty gritty details of what you need to know. So Danny, where should those listeners go if they want to learn more about um, how you help people, what kind of content you're putting out there just so they can really continue the journey that we helped them start today? Yeah, totally. So the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea podcast, the HASociety.com um, or the HA podcast on Instagram are all great entry points. 
Awesome. Well, we will share all of those links with you guys in the show notes for today's episode. And um, Danny, it's been so fun having you on yeah, the show you. and talking about a topic that I know you and I have spoken. You've, sp- I'm sure you've spoken about it more than I have, but this could have been a really basic, like, what's HA? What are the, you know, causes? What are the solutions? And not that that's not valuable, but I do think my goal is always to kind of elevate the conversation to bigger things. And so, again, if somebody needs the information that are the basics, they know where they can go now. And um, so is there any last minute words of like big picture wisdom you want to share with the audience before we wrap up? Sure. Yeah. Sweet understanding why your period is missing is totally just scratching the surface. Uh, that's, that's great. Cool. Whatevs. Just you, whoever is listening, if you need to hear this right now, you are a hundred percent capable of living so much bigger than you are right now and playing so much of a bigger game. What is it in your life that's stealing your focus? Is it this issue? Is it a different issue? Whatever it is, is taking away from opportunities that you just deserve straight up. So if anything, to, if you get anything from this episode today, it's that. I love it. Well, Danny, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your expertise and having a really interesting conversation that, again, we didn't really pre-plan, but it was exactly what it needed to be. So I appreciate your time and vulnerability and willingness to share what you've been through and what you help other women with. So we're so excited for all of you who are going to learn more about this through Danny's work. And thanks to everyone for hanging out with us for the last 45 minutes to an hour. We will look forward to seeing you here next week on the Fed and Fearless podcast. Take care, everybody. Are you a nutritionist or dietitian struggling to figure out how much to charge for your programs and services? Maybe you've heard that as a nutritionist, you should just charge what you're worth. But this way of thinking can cause you to either undercharge your clients or work yourself into the ground trying to earn your worth. As a healthcare provider, you can't set up a pricing structure that forces you to sacrifice your own health and well-being in the name of your business and your clients. But I promise it doesn't have to be this way. When you download my free profit planning workbook, I'll walk you step-by-step through the 10-step process for determining the right pricing for your nutrition business. As a nutritionist, you have the power to completely change someone's life for the better. There's huge value in that. So it's time to stop underselling what you do. By following along with this worksheet, you can determine exactly what you need to charge to achieve your revenue goals with ease. I'll teach you everything I've learned about pricing from growing my own nutrition business to over $250,000 in revenue annually and helping other dietitian and nutrition entrepreneurs hit their first 10 to $30,000 months and beyond. To get your free workbook, go to lauraschoenfeld.com forward slash profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, and grab your copy today. So you no longer have to wonder how to set the right rates for your incredibly valuable nutrition services. That's lauraschoenfeld.com forward slash profit. It's time to make the money that you deserve as a nutritionist, and I can't wait to help you get there.